Hi, my name is Alexander Bieber. I'm from the DICE Research Group at Paderborn University. Today I will present to you our paper Tentris, a tensor-based triple store. Let's first have a short overview of Tentris. As the name of the paper already tells, our approach is based on tensors and tensor algebra. Tentris stores RDF in a sparse Boolean tensor, which I will in the following call RDF tensor. It then uses operations like slicing and Einstein summation to answer sparkle queries on that tensor. For that, we developed a novel tensor data structure with up Hypertry. The design goal was to have a data structure which is memory efficient and supports all tensor operations efficiently, which are necessary to process sparkle queries on tensors. Another important part of Tentris is its Einstein summation algorithm, which takes care of most of the query processing. We based our Einstein summation algorithm for the hypertry on a worst case optimal join algorithm. Our evaluation shows that Tentris performs well in three benchmarks based on semantic web dog food, DBpedia, and what if data sets with up to 1 billion triples. You can find all our code benchmarks and results at tentris.dice-research.org. Before we jump into how Tentris works, I need to introduce some tensor basics. Let's start with the tensor definition we use in this context. An order n tensor is defined as a mapping from a finite multi-index k to some codomain. For n Tentris, the indices are typically integers and the codomain is either boolean or integer. To get a better intuition of what those may look like, let's look at some examples for different order tensors. An order zero tensor is what we know as a scalar. An order one tensor can be a vector. A well-known order two tensor is a matrix. And a good intuition for an order three tensor is a three-dimensional matrix. As we will deal in this presentation mainly with Boolean tensors, we will use a 3D coordinate node system to visualize order three tensors. If, for example, an entry 367 of the tensor is true, we plot a dot at that position of the coordinate system. For false entries, we plot no dots. One operation on tensors used by tensors is slicing. Slicing is an operation that returns a well-defined portion of a tensor in the form of a lower order tensor. In this example, we see a slice by a slice key which fixes the second dimension to the key part 2. It leaves the first and last dimension unbound. The result is a matrix which contains those entries of T for which the second key part is 2. The slice key can be any combination of key parts at unbound positions. Here, for example, the first two positions are set to 1 and 2, resulting in an order 1 tensor or vector. It contains those entries of T for which the first key parts are 1, 2. The central tensor operation used by Tentris is Einstein summation or short Einsum. Einstein summation is a variable input operation that makes it possible to combine multiple operations on tensors of n dimensions in a single expression. It supports, amongst others, inner products, outer products, contractions and scalar multiplications. Let's have a look at an example. We see here an expression in Einstein notation which calculates from the operands x, y and z the result r. The notation uses subscript labels to relate the dimensions of operands with each other and with the dimensions of the result. Each dimension of each tensor in the Einstein notation is subscripted with a label. Thus, it is easy to tell that R, X and Z are order 1 tensors. And with two labels, Y must be an order 2 tensor. To evaluate the Einstein notation expression, the labels are used to access the elements of the operands as you can see below. The elements are then multiplied. The labels that are not used in the result are handled by a summation operator. That applies to you in this example. Now that we have refreshed our knowledge on tensors, I will present the details of Tentris. We'll see the mapping of an RDF graph to a tensor, how we store the tensor as a hypertry, the mapping from Sparkle to Slices and Einstein summation, and I will shortly outline how we process the Einstein summation. 
Here we have a simple example of an RDF graph. It models entities and who they know. Also, some of them are unicorns. Like most other triple store solutions, we encode all RDF terms with integer IDs. One ID is reserved for unbound terms like they are used in Sparkle results. We can now translate the RDF triples from the graph to triples of IDs. Our representation of the RDF graph above is an order 3 tensor where the entries by those ID triples are set to true. All others are set to false and thus are not shown here. We call this tensor an RDF tensor. For Tentress we needed a tensor data structure with certain features. First, the tensor representation must be memory efficient when storing sparse Boolean tensors. Second, it must allow efficient slicing. Third, this slicing must be possible by any dimension and on any tensor which results from such a slicing. And fourth, the data structure must allow to iterate all non-zero slices by any dimension. We did not find a single tensor representation that had all those features we needed. So we had to come up with a solution by ourselves. Um, the result is a hypertry as shown on the right. Let's have a detailed look at that hypertry. On the right, you see the non-zero entries of a Boolean value tensor. They are the same we saw earlier. On the bottom, you see the full hypertry that encodes the tensor. We see on the first level a single root node that represents an order 3 tensor. On the second level, nodes representing order 2 tensors. And on the third level, leaf nodes representing order 1 tensors. Let's focus first on the root node representing an order 3 tensor. For each dimension, it stores a map which relates key parts to non-zero slices. This makes slicing the root node by any dimension efficient. Also, iterating non-zero slices can be accomplished efficiently. The nodes on the second level encode order 2 tensors in the same way. Thus, the properties of depth 3 nodes also apply to them. The leaf nodes represent order 1 tensors, or vectors. They store those positions of the vectors which are set to true. Iterating non-zero entries and probing if an entry is zero is trivial for this node as well. We have seen that slicing by any dimension and iterating non-zero slices can be accomplished efficiently. What's left is the efficient storage. Storage efficiency is accomplished by two means. First, we store the tensor sparsely, meaning we store only non-zero entries. Okay, this is a very basic technique applied by more or less any storage solution. The hypertrial allows to slice by any combination of dimensions. To accomplish this, we would need with traditional index structures like tries, one try for each collation order of the dimensions, which means we need to maintain a factorial of the number of dimensions of tries. This leads us to the naive storage bound shown here. That is also the naive storage bound of a hypertry if each reference slice is uh, stored separately. But let's have a look at the figure on the right. There we have the slice 3 to unbound. When we check how it is reachable from the root node, we see we can either reach it by slicing the root node by the first position by the key part 3 and the resulting slice by 2 by 2nd position to reach the, this node or we could start again from the root node, slice it by the 2nd the position by the key part 2 and the resulting slice by the 1st position by the key part 3 and would also reach that same node. As both paths will always lead to the same node, it is sufficient to store it only once. Applying this optimization lowers the factor for the upper storage bound to 2 by the power of the number of dimensions minus 1. Applied to order 3 tenses is used in tenses, this means when populating tries for all collation orders, like for example RDF3x does, the upper storage bound is 6 times the number of entries while a hypertry has its upper storage bound at four times the number of entries. That is a decrease of one third. Next, we'll have a look at how Sparkle queries are processed. The shown example Sparkle query returns all friends of entity one who are unicorns. In the first step, the triple patterns are resolved. 
For that, the terms from each triple pattern are used as slice keys, whereas the positions of the variables are left unbound in the slice keys. In a second step, the slices of the RDF tensor T are used as operands in an Einstein summation. The variables of the triple patterns are used as labels at the respective operands, and the variables from the select clause are used as subscripts to the result. The non-zero entries of the resulting tensor represent the result of the sparkle query. For the Einstein summation algorithm, we adopted a worst-case optimal multi-join algorithm, which was developed for tri-based indices. Our Einstein summation algorithm selects and extracts a label from the Einstein notation, resolves it and calls itself recursively until no labels are left. To resolve a label, it relates the dimensions of the operands subscripted with the extracted label. For each common key part, which maps all related positions to non-zero slices, a recursive call is invoked with the resulting sliced operands. Hereby, the order in which the labels are selected in invocations is crucial for the performance. We apply an online planning of the evaluation order. For that, we calculate at each invocation an estimation which label would reduce the search space the most. Then, that label is evaluated next. We come now to the evaluation of our approach. We used the benchmarking tool Iguana to run stress tests with Tentris and several other triple stores. Each run took one hour. We tested with 1, 4, 8, 16 and 32 clients requesting in parallel. As datasets we used Semantic Web Dog Food with around 400,000 triples, Dbpedia with around 700 million triples and the synthetic dataset WhatDiv with about 1 billion triples. All queries use SELECT, optionally with a DISTINCT, and a basic graph pattern. The queries for SWDF and DBpedia were generated with a benchmark generation tool feasible using query logs from the official endpoints. For what if we used one query per query template. Where it made sense, we used the queries in two versions with and without DISTINCT. Here we see plots of the result of the evaluation via HTTP with a single client. On the top we see scatter plots showing the performance of the triple stores on each query in queries per second. Fair queries are counted on the bottom line. The plot on the bottom aggregates the results as average penalized queries per second. Penalized means here that failing queries are rated with a timeout duration of 3 minutes. Please note that the first row of plots is log scaled, while the second row has a linear scale. We tested the triple stores Blaze Graph, Fuseki, GraphDB, GStar, Virtuoso, and of course Tentris. Tentris is the dark blue in the plots, or the second left. In the scatter plot on top, you can clearly see that Tentris outperforms all other triple stores for many queries. Also, the median is higher than that of any other triple store for all three datasets. With respect to average penalized QPS shown in the plot below, Tentris is in all benchmarks about two times faster than the second fastest triple store. Now let's see how the triple stores perform with multiple clients. The plot shows on the x-axis the number of clients requesting and on the y-axis the average penalized queries per second. One series in the plot immediately catches the eye. It is Tentris, plotted in dark blue with solid dots. Tentris is the only triple store that scales nearly linear with respect to the number of clients in all benchmarks. To summarize, we presented a new efficient tensor data structure dubbed Hypertry. We used mapping from Sparkle to tensors and showed how a subset of Sparkle can be processed with Einstein summation. Further, we presented the Einstein summation algorithm for the hypertry, which is based on a worst-case optimal join. The evaluation shows that the resulting framework Tentris is a competitive fast triple store. For the future, we plan to extend the Sparkle support of Tentris to Sparkle 1.1. We are also working on optimizing the hypertry and the Einstein summation algorithm further. Thank you for your attention. If you have questions or if you are interested in our work, feel free to contact me or our research group. 
If you want to have a look at our code, benchmarks or results, you can find them at tentris.dice-research.org.